And as the crisis in River State uh, keeps unfolding in different dimensions, one of the four lawmakers sat and passed the 2024 budget for the state, while the seats of 27 lawmakers have been declared vacant. What is the fate of these 27 lawmakers under the law? And can four lawmakers, they legally qualify to pass the state appropriation a bill? Let's have this conversation further with their associate professor, Dr. Sam Amadi, a rights analyst. Welcome. Thank you, Chris. The crisis is really not going away. It's ding dong and in legal parlance, of course, uh, the judges and the lawyers, the bench and the bar are going to meet and the rest. And it's a boom <laughs> time again for your colleagues, right? And bad time for citizens. <laughs> 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 yeah, but uh, let's look at the uh, pros and cons there, you know. I if you ask me, shouldn't uh, the law take its uh, course? Well, the, the first course is, look, when people are elected to office, the Supreme Court says, and the law says anyway, they are sponsored by the party, by party. That's what the Constitution says. And so the Supreme Court have said that you cannot the camp, leave the party. If you leave the party, they leave the seat. Uh, except in some rare circumstance where people say, okay, there's a faction or what kind of, but the, but the, court of, the Supreme Court's position is that you ought to vacate because uh, you are keeping the seat for the party. If you look at um, in other jurisdictions, like the UK, where they have, uh, we, we have uh, it's a parliamentary, it's a parliamentary system. system where the list is the party that wins the seat. Mm. Uh, and so in many cases, ascribe persons to those seats. Mm. But here, the individual stand for election, but the Constitution says... They you come under a party, so the party... So, said. the 27 uh, House of Assembly members who decided we, there are no issues about PDP conflict as a party. There is a conflict between the governor, who is not a party chairman, and the former governor, who is still a PDP member. So, so there are no basis for the camp. But having the camp, the argument is very simple, that they should vacate. They are, there's rumor that they're going to court to get some kind of uh, injunction. Again, four out of 30, maybe out of uh, 31 uh, House of Remember, sat not in the official chamber, somewhere next to the governor and approve a budget. So the notion of you can't spend without appropriation means that the people, that's the logic. In, in our democracy, we are bereft of theoretical insight. We struggle with practices and undermine its essence. Why do we have to have appropriation? The simple logic is that the people's funds should be spent by the people themselves through their reps. So if four, only four, approves a budget, could it really be said that the people have approved the budget when only four of their rep, with the, of their rep, not even 27 or 20 of the reps of the people. So the logic of democracy is that the people act to their representative. So in a sense, that's a problematic. But if you look at the constitution, the constitution does not provide for detail as to lawmaking process. It simply articulates the notion, for example, of the, the, the House can make its own rules. It provides basic, especially with National Assembly, really. So the, 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 the regulate, the legislative agency uh, institutions seem to self-regulate. I've seen some auditors, for example, in the Do State, we know that the bulk of the legislators who are, you know, kind of left behind, struggled for it almost up to now. They're not fully, into, so the governor went ahead with the governors. We've seen in PDP under Basanjo, we are, uh, in play two states. Yes, where some legislators were taken to Lagos, in Ekiti, for example, Ekiti. to <laughs> impeach Fire share. a governor with less than enough legislators. So the, the crisis is now, do we really need to now define legislative procedure? Because we've seen some recklessness. Why don't we talk rascality. about, I'm sorry, uh, I'll be expecting you to talk about the constitutional abuse of a sacred document like the Constitution, you know, by political actors. For two reasons. One is that sometimes our Constitution is very, very vague. I give an example now is issue around how many people can really constitute a valid legislative house, number one. Number two, the politicians 
abuse the constitution because the courts themselves, the constitution of the constitution is the court, is protector. That's when we talk about legislative supremacy, uh, judicial supremacy in the constitution mm -hmm. and judicial review power. The constitution is the one who protects the constitution by, through judicial review, by ensuring that the tenets are kept. So when you go to court today, the Nigerian courts, look, let's not, for, for, for the fear of being sacrilegious, it's really easy to say probably there's no court as an independent institution. So you, you're going to get in the days to come an order from High Court to Rivers. There's somebody in Abuja High Court We pretend that he is adjudicating on a matter a matter in River State where there is a High Court of River State. I mean, a judge who is well meaning will knock it off and say, you know what? Coordinate uh, go, to your, go back to, to your state. Where there's a High Court. Yeah. Why do you have to go to High Court in Abuja yeah. here to extract injunction? Uh, and the judge will administer in a, a state, state where there's a High Court. I mean, those, these are cynical behavior of judges who are compromised. So you're right. If the judiciary was, was upright and decisive in adjudicating the Constitution, they will signal, everything about Constitution is signaling to politicians that, look, you are going to... Follow due process. So Don't if the governor here. decamps, we saw it in Omahe, Omahe, who left PDP to APC, and the question was, shouldn't he have vacated? So there are inconsistencies contradictions because the judiciary has been captured by petition and we penalize against the constitution itself. So you're right. We shouldn't be talking about four legislators signing budget meant for 31 legislators. We should be talking about to several legislators thinking about impeaching a governor who has done nothing because he, is, he has a quarrel falls with, out, uh, with, with, with his ex-governor. With, with his godfather. Godfatherism is an informal arrangement that has no bearing, should have no bearing on constitutional governor. So let's assume that the governor has betrayed trust. The only option is political. So when the constitution gives the assembly the power of impeachment for high crime, high crime and gross misconduct, it's not been abused. So they can wake up this morning and impeach the governor. You go to the uh, go to court. So go to court is now is uh, invitation to uncertainty, dead end. Go to court. So the governor will be will preempt that by probably burning down his assembly, probably reconstructing it endlessly for four years, and running government with just four out of thirty one. I mean, so but we are burning our country at both ends. So at the end of those who want to remove him, they are acting unconstitutionally and undermining democracy and governance. At the end of the governor who is defending his, his mandate, he's going to be forced to act unconstitutionally and undermine governance. So if he took federal government about 130 something committees cumulatively mm. to still scrutinize a federal budget and not do a good job of it. Mm. He took four people two days <laughs> to scrutinize <laughs> well, a state budget. Well, some people would just say it's a state, you know, it's not uh, the federation. Four, so. four people <laughs> do this. So basically, my worry is that we've trivialized democracy in Nigeria and we have undermined governance and we have delayed... Are we sitting on a keg of gunpowder? We are in three ways. One, look, the level of poverty and starvation arising. In, 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 if you look at the inflation of now 28.20%, if the next quarter we might be running a risk of getting to 30 something percent inflation and up to 40 food inflation. So what that means in real terms is that look at the level of criminality, banditry, kidnapping in Abuja here. Enclaves, public estates are being invaded by kidnappers. Hunger, desperation. So the tool for dealing with this crisis is governance. Now, if that tool is so politicized that House of Assembly, instead of sitting down and going through reports and bill, bill laws to condition executive power for public good. And not, uh, and not arbitrarily Abuja, allow governors shopping to... for which, to high, the, uh, which high court <laughs> will give them order to sit and impeach. So how will you have respond to the crisis of governance that is real. So the, the result will be increasing criminality, mm. helplessness, hopelessness, political talker, vandalism, kidnapping, everything. And then the key thing is that the 
the confluence of economic crisis and social disorder is dangerous to handle. So we are not just destroying democracy. And the social we're disorder, let, look, <laughs> let's call it spade a spade, is like the jaws are being pitted against the queries. That is the, so Protocol now, Rivers now has the look not just of personality war and court. We now have a brewing ethnic warfare just because a politician that could who be, left that, 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 office that, yes, cannot leave office. That I mean, can descend to the Rwandan uh, exactly, genocide uh, exactly. situation. The, 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 the memes and the, and the tropes is up there about Ijo, it's our turn. People are fighting us. So this is a peaceful, this is a state that has moved as one. Forget the corruption. At least we didn't have any ethnic flare-outs. But because somebody lost election or finished his tenure, couldn't finish and step out. So you're going to convulse the state now into a state where only only money about It's already on conversion, isn't it? Absolutely. So it, it could the heat will be the fever will be so feverish that the repercussion you might see get back to the militancy of the pre yaradua era. And so the, the, the lack of sensitivity of politicians, the, 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 the obsession with winning, winning, winning every fight. You win election by rigging, you win political fight by all means, you just have to win. And the cost of winning, they don't think around it. So it's, it's, it's terrible. This is a disaster. And that's why what has set us back is leadership. And the problem of leadership is not that we don't have skilled people. Is this obsession with triumphant? So the former governor sees this as a fight. You must win, and to must win means the United States government will commit almost half of its resources to winning this war, instead of resources to address economic challenges. In fact, in the last four years, Rivers is bad on human development indicators. Forget flyovers, if you look at environmental, the black suit, if you look at primary health care, education comparatively with states that, that have that, lower... They are ranking, they are ranking with Zamfara and uh, Kebi, Yobe So with and all this wealth, resources. you used to play policy for eight years and you want to play more with four years. So for four years, this governor will be playing defensive politically and not dealing with the challenges of governance. So, multiply it across states where you're going to have this kind of issues. And now you know why governance is the problem. We have a crisis of economic failure. It's compounded by the failure of politics to create ideas, resources to, to improve, build resilience. The UN, the DDP is talking about resilience post-COVID. Economies that are even strong are focusing on building resilience. So economies that are shattered like ours are focused on undermining the, the structure itself. Absolutely. Well, <laughs> uh, Associate Professor of Law, Sam Omadi, a RISE uh, analyst, I think uh, you've hit the nail on the world, on the head, you know, and uh, let's just uh, leave the anchor there. Thank, Thank you, you very much, much for coming on.